Good day, everyone. My name's Aidan Chudley, and I'm the UAV rep for New South Wales and ACT at CR Kennedy. Today, I'm going to host a webinar talking about the Cloud Geomatics post processing kinematic software useful for DJI drones. In this webinar, we're going to use the data that is pulled from a Phantom 4 RTK drone and post process it using the Cloud software along with our SmartNet network login. So PPK drone surveying is very similar to RTK. However, PPK happens after the fact, hence why it's called post-processing kinematic. Uh, what the cloud software does, it uses the drone's RTK hardware to collect survey data and geotags. The drone will attach the geocoordinates to each image with its onboard GPS, and then also it'll get the information from the base station or cause network, uh, whichever is being used. Uh, in the case of PPK technology, uh, neither GNS, base station, or the drone are connected at time. So it makes it a little bit more simpler to use PPK because you're not constantly relying on the telemetry between the drone and the base station. PPK definitely has some advantages in certain situations, along with RTK having uh, its advantages in different situations too. Uh, PPK is really useful as you don't need to have the base station constantly connected to the Phantom 4 RTK. This means if you're in areas that have high interference or you lose connection with the Phantom 4 RTK, your imagery is still going to get corrected and you're still going to have reliable survey quality data. Also, with this, any CauseNet or base station can be used that logs .obs files. You, you don't need to worry about having a base station that ne needs to connect to the drone. You can use any base station or survey equipment that you currently have. Uh, also, it means that you don't need to lug around a base station to site. You can use a, just the Phantom 4 RTK and you don't need to worry about that extra equipment uh, to site, which is definitely an advantage in remote locations. And then finally, for PPK, you can, if your license allows it, you can use it for missions that are beyond telemetry range. So for extended visual line of sights or beyond visual line of sight missions uh, where you are going to lose your connection, PPK still will ensure that all the images and geolocations are corrected. The Cloud PPK software isn't just limited to the Phantom 4 RTK. It works with a range of DJI drones, including uh, the Phantom 4 RTK, which we'll show a demonstration in this webinar on, uh, the M210 V2, or the M300 with P1. So when you purchase the Cloud software, you're able to use the software with all the DJI drones that you have if they are RTK enabled. As mentioned before, the PPK offers greater flexibility in operations. It means that you can do your missions longer and further away from the base, and it's going to be more reliable and accurate than a standard RTK mission. Also, you're going to get better results. You're not going to get the data loss or initialization loss from the RTK radio link. All collected data is processed with similar algorithms to the RTK, and it is run forwards and backwards through the data for higher degrees of optimization. An added benefit of the cloud software is that it supports geoid and different geoid and coordinate system support. So essentially, you can use any of the local uh, coordinate systems uh, that you, you wish. You can update your own local coordinate systems, or you can use some existing uh, coordinate systems like MGA55 or, or so on. Also, you can use uh, OzGeoid or any well-known geoid or coordinate systems. Also, with the end result, we can choose to either geotag the images on the EXIF data, on the heading, or we can create a CSV file with all the stored PPK data.
the equipment needed uh, for PPK processing is really limited and it can really enhance your time on site. Uh, for the cloud software, all you really need on site is a drone itself. So for this demo, all we needed to collect the data was a DJI Phantom 4 RTK drone. Uh, no base station, nothing else. Also for the post processing, uh, we're going to need a SmartNet subscription, uh, which we'll input into the cloud software. But that's really it. Uh, all you need is a Phantom 4 RTK drone and no additional hardware to log, lug around on site. Everything can be done from the ease of your office or, or computer after you've uh, acquired all the imagery. The majority of our users uh, will be using the GS RTK app uh, to plan their missions uh, in 2D mode. Uh, if you have the SDK version of the Phantom 4 RTK, you'll be able to use other third-party apps. But uh, with the GS RTK app, it has everything you really need. You can, you can import KML files into the controller uh, to specify the area that you want to map, or you can uh, just through the ease of creating your own polygon uh, over the base map, you can define the area of the site that you want to map. All the data is stored on the SD card on board with the Phantom 4 RTK. So the DGI uh, planning app has made it extremely simple quick and easy to get set up on site and in, in my opinion uh, the ease of use of the RTK app is uh, second to none. Okay from here uh, I'm going to do a live demonstration of the cloud software. Uh, for this uh, I'm not going to speed up any processes. Uh, I have a raw uh, project that uh, I've flown and uh, we're going to do everything in real time just so everyone can see the ease of use of the cloud software. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get started. From here, I'm going to exit the slideshow. I'm going to open up the cloud software. With the cloud software, I'm going to import my uh, drone log files. So I'm going to open up. I have my uh, files here ready to go. I'm going to click the PPK, PPK raw files. It's going to import those. From there, I'm going to import my timestamp. This is all recorded within the RTK drone. Okay, so once uh, the drone's files are uploaded, I'm going to get uh, on the right hand side of my window how many camera events there were. And I'm also going to get uh, the mission start and end time. From there, I'm going to import my import my base Rhinox files. Okay, for this demonstration, we're using our SmartNet to import our files, but you can import your own base station files. Uh, from there, uh, we're going to go to online correction. We're going to choose our provider that we're using. Uh, as you can see, it's brought a lot of providers from around the world, uh, especially from Australia, All Day, RTK and SmartNet. Uh, we're going to click on SmartNet. From there, uh, we're going to click on Australia. I already have my uh, username and password in there. I'm going to click Get Correction. It's going to come up on the window and it's going to tell me where the nearest base station is. All right, so our nearest base station for this flight was Maxville and it's located 17.36 uh, kilometers away. If I'm okay with this, I'm going to click OK. All right, it's downloaded all the data from SmartNet. And this for me is an amazing feature that I don't have to go to the SmartNet web page, uh, select my time frame, merge the files and download it. Uh, the cloud system just does it automatically, which really can reduce your time in the PPK process. Okay, once I'm happy and it's uh, giving me my success uh, box, I'm going to proceed. I'm going to process the GPS data. Uh, down here to the right, we're going to get uh, processing. Uh, so it's going to forward process and then backwards process. And uh, it's really crunching uh, through this. This process generally takes 
about a minute or so. So the PPK process it isn't long at all. So it's done a forward, now it's going to be doing its uh, backwards processing. So it's just going along, nearly done. From there, we're going to get uh, accuracies. Right? It's going to give us three different uh, accuracies uh, depending on the solution or the fix. We're going to get green represents three centimeter accuracy, orange rep representing 25 centimeter accuracy, and red representing five meter accuracy. As you can see with our flight plan here, uh, all green. So it's showing that all the solutions are within three centimeters. And this is our flight plan that we expected. If we want to further view our flight plan, we can click on flight plan graph. It's going to show our east-west deviation, our north-south deviation, and our height deviation. Um, but for this, the main one that I like to look at is our flight plan. Seeing the accuracy of all of our uh, image locations, uh, if we want to further dive into it, we can look uh, at each image individually. And as we go through here, we're going to see that everything is three centimeter. As you can see, very quick. Uh, after that, we're going to select our image folder. That's my image folder. I'm going to Click OK. From there, it's just going to sort the photos and uh, apply an IMU calibration. Um, again, this process generally takes, depending on the size of your job, between 30 seconds to two minutes. Uh, all in all, it's pretty quick. Okay, from there, I'm going to get my review of uh, the job, where it's going to show each coordinates point, lat, long, height, and accuracy. If I want to change the output system, at the moment it's in WGS84, I can change that. So I can change that to the global projected system, and it's got all around the world different locations. For us, uh, Australia is the most prominent. And because we're located in Sydney, uh, we're going to use MGA 55. Once we're happy with that, press OK. We can, we're just going to use ellipsoidal height, but we can also change that to various osgeoids and uh, HDs, depending on the need for our output. But for this, we're just going to use ellipsoidal height. We're going to apply. So it's going to apply the corrections there, or the changes there, and our output is going to be in GDA 2020 MGA 55. Okay, I have two options from here. The first option is to export the photo coordinates in a CSV or comma separated file. Uh, this is the quickest uh, way to export the corrections, and then you can use the CSV to import into PIX4D or, or whatever processing software you use. From there, we're just going to click uh, CSV, click OK. We're going to name it. So I'm going to name this PPK Web Webinar. Save. And then we're saved. All right. So the CSV has been saved to our computer. Another option we can do, we can write the coordinates uh, into the image headers of the XF data, and so we can geotag the photos. This process, exactly the same output, but might take a little bit longer. It just means when you're importing into PIX4D, you don't need uh, the CSV file. For that, we'll just click on uh, geotag photos. OK. There we go. Uh, so, and that's it for the PPK processing with SmartNet. It's an extremely easy to use, fast 
and simple process. The cloud software has done a really, really good job at just making it extremely user friendly and simplify the process that you don't need to be going to SmartNet or, or a different correction service websites to download it. You can get all the data in one place and keep all your data together nice and neat. Well, uh, that's it for the live demonstration and overview of the cloud PPK software. I'm just going to give everyone a moment to scan this QR code. If you have any more questions that you uh, want me to answer or you want to be in contact about possibly purchasing a Phantom 4 RTK or the cloud software. So just give everyone a moment to scan the QR code. And I hope all the questions that, that have been asked during the webinar uh, have been answered. And yeah, please feel free to reach out and uh, contact myself or the email sales at crkennedy.com.au and uh, we're happy to assist. Thank you very much.